Hello and welcome to Comic Book Storytellers. My name is Frick Weber. I'm the author of The Field and the Edge of the Woods and Star and Stripes, both of which are available at Cloud9 Comics, sponsor of these videos that we do, and they've got a ton of free downloads. So if you get a chance, please check them out. Also want to thank my day job, Mind Over Media, for the resources to put this together. And on this episode of Storytellers, we talked to a bunch of different artists at the Chicago Comic Con and found out how they got their start. And just as these videos and my books are how I'm getting the start in the comics, we're going to find out what worked for these guys and how they got started in the business. Hey, so how, how did I get into comics? Uh... I always drew since, since I was a kid. I always liked drawing. I grew up, I had three brothers, so I wanted to be in the comic book or sports card or toy business. When I grew up, and uh, I find out that this was actually a, a, a job, you know, drawing comics. Then I start to look out for the window of opportunity to break in. Well, you go through life, you tra you're training for a career, and then by the time you get out of high school, whatever it is you're good at, whatever, what, regardless of what your preconceived notion of what it is you wanted to be, what you find you can be, and actually uh, make some money so you can pay your living at, that, that usually determines your career, so that's kind of what happened with me. You know, I graduated high school and I realized my grades were not good enough to study and uh, discuss dinosaurs and fossils, but they were just good enough for me to draw superheroes for a living. Right around high school and college, I started taking it seriously. So I, I knew I wanted a career in art somehow, and I enjoyed comics. Uh, and I went to school down at the Savannah College of Art and Design for my master's degree. I actually went to a school called the uh, New York Academy of Figurative Art that specialized in teaching the techniques uh, of the Renaissance masters. A few months before I graduated, I met an artist named Randy Green, who's been working in the industry you know, 15, 20 years now. He was working on X-Men and he needed some help with his background. So my professors knew him pretty well and they introduced me to him and so they suggested me for it and he lived in North Carolina so I would drive from Georgia to North Carolina every weekend and we would bang out like 10 pages in a couple days for the X-Men book. Eventually created my own comic book character called Cyberfrog, found a small press publisher for him and um, two years, three years later I was working at DC. And that's really how you do it. You just you start out at, at the bottom and you work your way up. I drive back, go to class all week, go back. We draw another 10 pages. I don't know what he was doing during that week <laughs> because I'd get up there and we'd have a lot of work to do. But at any rate, so that kind of got my foot in the door. I joined his studio group after I graduated. And kind of since then, just doing conventions, networking. When I was up at college, my, uh, my mom would send me a stack of comic books and I worked for the school newspaper. So what I would do is, when I was done with all my comics, I'd give them out to everybody on campus. I was known as a comic book guy. But I did not know, because I worked for the school newspaper, that I wanted to get into publishing. So when I got out of school, my mom actually ran a comic book and sports card shop. I started a newsletter for the people that, that came to the store and they loved it so much that I turned it into a magazine. And then about 15 years ago, I got into the convention business with the Chicago Comic Con, which we are here today, 15 years later. There's now going to be over 70,000 people here this weekend. This is a community. You know, these people who are publishing their own comics right now, they have every opportunity to rub shoulders with and get to know some of the editors at Marvel and DC and some of the writers and artists. And um, uh, if they show promise, uh, that's, that's where they can end up. Right now, I can guarantee you there's at least half a dozen or more who don't have a badge that says, I'm editor so-and-so, that are flipping through people's work talent scouting. There used to be a convention in England, um, in London, every year. And um, it was well attended by DC. It took me a couple of years to, to put together some money, saving and that, and fly up to San Diego. I got to do the portfolio review, as everybody else did, and uh, I got a couple, uh, you know, uh, bad reviews, you know, bad reviews meaning they said I wasn't ready yet, but good reviews because they really, uh, you know, they, they, make, they make me understand what, uh, what they, these guys needed. I took my portfolio there to show Dick Giordano, who was um, the, the editor-in-chief of DC. And I was standing in line and the guys in front of me were kind of, they, they were about the same quality that I was. And he was giving them reviews and critiques, but they weren't getting a job. So I stepped out of line. And I came back the next year after practicing for a whole year. 
um, and showed them my portfolio because I didn't really want a critique or review. I wanted, I wanted to get work. So I went back home, I finished school, and at the same time I prepared a, a better portfolio next, next year. I went back again and I got hired. He looked at my stuff and you know, he pointed out a few problems here and there, but he said it wasn't anything that a, that a good editor could, could help me with. And he gave me his card and uh, a couple of weeks later, Andy Helfer, who was editing Justice League at the time, called me up and asked if I wanted to draw an issue of Justice League. And I, I thought for it, you know, for a couple of seconds on, on how, how effusive I should be. And uh, I said, yeah, sure, why not? And I think I was 19 at the time, so um, that was how it started. It kind of becomes who you know after you're good enough to start getting work, you know, just to the contacts you make, so. My first job was Justice League and it's been downhill ever since then. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's another episode of Comic Book Storytellers. Remember, we'd love to hear what you think. You can find us three different ways on Facebook, and the feedback really helps. I'd like to thank again Cloud9 Comics who, for sponsoring us so we can share these with you for free. So if you get a chance, please check them out. They got a ton of free downloads. Thanks for watching. See you next episode.